I'm going to walk you through a CTA GI bleeding protocol study to help show you how we approach these cases in patients that are coming in with either hematochesia or melana. This is a study that often comes out of the emergency department in someone that's coming in with a lot of gastrointestinal blood loss, they're very anemic, potentially hemodynamically unstable, and we're trying to find a source of bleeding that an interventional radiologist can then go in and do a catheter embolization or some other procedure to stop the bleeding. So in this study, we have three phases. We've got a non-contrast study, which is what I have up here. We've got an arterial phase, which I'm pulling up now. In the arterial phase, the contrast has been injected, and then you image within the first minute, usually about 45 seconds after you inject, to time the contrast while it's actually in the aorta and the branch vessels. Then you have a delayed phase that's obtained sometimes after. And I'll explain why we have the arterial phase, why we have the delayed phase, and why we do the non-contrast. So when I pull up this study, I first think about the clinical history that I'm given. Is this melana or is this hematochesia? If it's melana, I'm thinking something higher, like stomach, proximal small bowel, if you're getting a history of hematochesia, I think more colon first, just like a diverticular bleed or angiodysplasia being very common causes of lower GI bleeding in the colon. But there is obviously some overlap. Sometimes you can have hematochesia from a very brisk upper GI bleed and nothing's ever 100% in medicine. So when I pull up the study, I think about first, where, where are they telling me? In this case, it was hematochesia, so I'm gonna focus on the colon. And I'm in the arterial phase, and this is actually where I start. And what you're looking for is a blush of contrast in the lumen of the bowel. And that is indicative of active extravasation or an active arterial bleed. So as I'm going through this, I'm looking for a bright spot in the bowel. So we have sigmoid colon here, and there's a lot of diverticuli. And as I'm going through the colon, I'm looking for a bright spot. And sure enough, see this little focus of enhancement here? That is contrast that's being extravasated into the bowel. But I first need to confirm that, so I go to the non-con, because sometimes you can have bright objects in the bowel that are either pills that the patient's taking, sometimes you can have sutures from a prior surgery, so you wanna make sure that this blush is not present on the non-con. So I'm going to the non-con now, and sure enough, I'm in the same spot, and there's not that blush of contrast. So you know this is real, and we're seeing it in the arterial phase. What you then wanna go look at is the delayed phase, and you wanna see, as one would expect, when you have active bleeding into the bowel, it should change, it should propagate, it should layer, it shouldn't just be the same look on the arterial phase as it is the delayed phase. So as I go to the delayed phase, I wanna see something different, like maybe layering of the contrast, you see more contrast, and sure enough, so here's the contrast here. First of all, there's more of it, and you see how there's just other spots where it's kind of layering? So that's what we call propagation. So there's a clear change, there's propagation of the contrast from the initial arterial blush on to the delayed phase, indicating that this is a real bleed, this is happening in real time, this is something that the interventional radiologist can potentially go in and embolize. Uh, some of these patients end up going to surgery if they're very, very unstable, and that ends up being the decision of the clinician and the IR versus surgical teams. So that's an active bleed. This is a positive study. A lot of these end up being negative, and the reason is it's just sometimes the bleeding is not brisk enough to show up at one point in time on a CT. And as one additional case I want to show you, I want to show you a nuclear medicine bleed scan because these are actually more sensitive in identifying bleeding and these often come through in patients that have had negative workups otherwise and we're still trying to find a reason for bleeding and it's kind of the same idea and I hopefully after showing you this case it'll make sense so in a nuclear medicine GI bleeding study you get the red blood cells tag them with a the radionuclide and then image the abdomen and you do dynamic imaging meaning you're not just imaging at a point in time you're imaging over an hour for instance and looking for any extravasation of the radio labeled red blood cells into the GI lumen so this is what I have pulled up here, and I want you to focus on the left abdomen, and we already see a little focus of activity here, and as I scroll, watch how it changes. There's obviously more of it. It's starting to propagate, and see how it just looks like bowel. This is the tagged red blood cell extravasating into the bowel and propagating within the bowel. So this is localizing to probably the jejunum, but this is a positive GI bleeding study, and it's more sensitive, again, than the CT study, and this is another option. If you've done a workup, if you've done endoscopy, if you've done colonoscopy, if you've done a CTA, none of it's shown anything. This red blood cell study in nuclear medicine is an option because you can do dynamic imaging. You can image over a period of time and obtain those images, not at just a single time point. And it's much more sensitive in detecting GI bleeding. And again, this is a nice example of a positive study. One final thing I'll add, anytime you're in a nuclear medicine study, you do this imaging first, but you always have spec CT that you can add on and help localize activity. So suppose we saw something in the left upper quadrant, we weren't sure if it was in bowel. This I think is clearly bowel, but you can do a CT to correlate the findings you're seeing. So here we have a spec CT pulled up and this can help you localize the activity. So what I showed you in the left upper quadrant that was propagating, 
here it is here in the bow and this hot stuff here is just the radio labeled rbc's in the bow and this is helping you confirm that okay this is a bow hemorrhage because sometimes you can have something in like the retroperitoneum that can look like it's in the bow but if you're not sure you can do the spec ct in this case we're localizing the radio tracer activity it's clearly in the small bowel here specifically the jejunum so this is really a beautiful example of a positive gi bleeding study in nuclear medicine okay that's all i got thanks for watching hope it was helpful see you next time